cost optimization. Probably everyone's favorite topic, cost optimization. How do we save money? How do we save money? There's a lot that we can do from a cost optimization perspective when it comes to cloud. And as a result, the KPI becomes super interesting as well. So for starters, what we can do is, are we using some of the native cloud, cap cloud tools capabilities? So if you're on AWS, are you using Trusted Advisor? Because that tool on its own is a good starting point for cost optimization. If you're on Microsoft Azure, are you using Advisor? On, on Azure as well to be able to do some kind of cost optimization. Now, what these native tools will do is they will go through and assess how you're using your instances, how you're using your assets on their cloud over a period of time. Let's say over a period of six months, trusted advisor or advisor come back and say, hey, there is this instance that for the last six months, you've only used 50% of its resources. And we suggest reducing it or changing the family type, the instance type, to a smaller instance, and as a result, you're able to save an X amount of money. That is immediate cost optimization. So your ability to do cost optimization relies heavily on these, these tools. So a good KPI is, are we even using these tools? Now, these tools will come in free versions, and then you have, there's a pay version. But another KPI could also be, are you using any kind of third party? Now, the third party tools will go above and beyond. They'll give you more advanced features. Each one of those advanced features could in turn also become a cost optimization KPI that you can then tweak. You can measure cost optimization based on the number of changes maybe that you've made on a quarterly basis. So let's say your third party tool or your native tools have, made, have given you an advice to make some changes to let's say five instances. And out of these five instances, you've taken their advice three out of five times, that becomes a really good key performance indicator that you can measure, something that is tangible that you can measure. And there's a lot of other uh, advice, there's a lot of other recommendations that these tools can give you that then can turn into key performance indicators as far as how we're optimizing. So this could include things like how are we optimizing egress traffic costs. How are we optimizing, again, how we're using our instances or our virtual machines? Have we done any sort of optimization to the application? Again, we talked about in the earlier KPI, but did that translate into cost savings, right? Or cost optimization? Because if we're doing a lift shift and optimize, then we're going to immediately optimize the cost. I'll give you an example. If you are moving, if you've got a web server farm on premises that consists of 20 web servers, and you decide to do a, strictly a lift and shift. I'm gonna move 20 web servers from point A to point B, and there'll be very little cost savings, cost optimization in the process. You're simply using the cloud, in this case, as a hosting provider. So very little, if any, cost savings or optimization. But if we decide that instead of moving 20 web servers, we're gonna create an auto-scaling group on our cloud provider, and we're going to put five web servers in that auto-scaling group. And based on the auto scaling groups, CPU utilization, memory utilization, disk utilization, bandwidth, whatever it is, once these metrics hit, let's say 60 or 70%, we're going to deploy a new server. And then when these metrics fall below a certain threshold, we're going to remove a server. Now I've immediately done cost optimization to this particular workload because I'm not using 20 web servers on an ongoing basis. I'm deploying and I'm removing servers as needed. That could also be a very good key performance indicator.